So we're going to take a look at the economic impact of a tariff in a simple, uh, a simple example. So again, tariffs are taxes on imported goods. And we're going to start with a, a basic assumption that one, it's a small country, that is to say it's a price taker on international markets. Two, that there's perfect competition within the domestic economy. And three, they're homogeneous goods. So these basic three assumptions are an important part of the story. Now, in general, there are, well, there are many instances where governments might want to have a tariff for various reasons. But I want to think about uh, three clear reasons why a government want, might want to do this. One, it might want to increase production inside the domestic industry. In a very a much related goal, it might want to increase employment in that industry. And also may want to increase government revenue. This is, after all, a tax. So we want to take a look at whether or not the government can reach these goals. And, and at what cost. And it's that second part where economic analysis is really going to be, uh, to be helpful. So we have a simple supply and demand curve, domestic price on, or the price of the good on, on this axis, quantity inside the domestic economy on the horizontal axis. Again, this is the impact inside the domestic economy. We've got a domestic supply curve, We've got a domestic demand curve, and let's imagine that we start out with a with free trade, and the domestic economy uh, has access to this price of one hundred dollars for the goods from the uh, foreign sources. So initially, we've got Q1 produced domestically. We've got Q2 consumed domestically, and the difference is the imported goods. And now we're imagining a situation where a tariff of $10, a $10 tariff is, is imposed so that foreigners have to pay that tax in order to sell inside the domestic economy. Now, as we've talked about before, for a small country, the foreigners will go ahead and pass on the entire ten dollars to in the domestic market and the domestic firms operating within this context of homogeneous goods and perfect competition will raise their price by the full amount of the tariff so the new domestic price is a hundred and ten dollars so first impact is we take a look at the domestic production at the higher price of a hundred and ten dollars you have an increase in domestic production. So satisfying the first goal that the government likely had. And although we can't show it here explicitly on this graph, you probably have an increase in employment as well. Certainly would be consistent with increased domestic production. We have an increase in price, which will reduce the domestic consumption, where now you import not only Q3 to Q4. So let's take a look at the government revenue part. So the difference between these two horizontal lines is the tariff. Okay, It's $10. So that vertical distance is $10. That's the amount of tariff revenue per unit of imports that the government receives. So this is the amount of imports, the difference between the domestic consumption and domestic production, multiplied times the per unit tariff revenue. So you're going to have government revenue of C. So at first blush, we've really met all of the goals that we're trying to meet. We've increased domestic production, likely increased domestic employment, and we've had an increase in government revenue. Now, what economic analysis is designed to do is to look beyond that simple, superficial effect and look at any secondary effects. We've already hinted at one, that you have 
a decrease in domestic consumption associated with the higher price. So, we do this, and we'll look at gains and losses looking at producer surplus gains, produce a consumer surplus loss, and the impact on government revenue. All right, so producer surplus is given simply by area A. That is the difference in the price over to the supply curve. I'm not going to go into the details of, of why that's the producer surplus, but based on what we've talked about before, A is going to be the gain in producer surplus. That's a measure of how much domestic producers essentially gain in profit because they've had the higher price and now the incentive to increase domestic production. So they've increased domestic production profitably, and that is area A. Consumers, though, face higher prices. We've got A, B, C, D, that is to say the difference in the price over to the demand curve, representing the losses to domestic consumers. There are consumers who are going to be paying a higher price that continue to buy it, and some consumers that are going to be priced out of the market. But we'll come back to that. And then finally, we've got government revenue of C, which we've talked about before. So here we've got these gains and losses by different groups inside the domestic economy. And what I emphasize, these are all domestic effects. So what does that have, uh, what's the impact on national welfare? And this is where it gets tricky, and ultimately a choice of how you measure this. Now, as I've talked about before, the way I'm going to measure the impact on the national welfare is to consider if someone gains domestically by the same amount as somebody else loses, that is to say there's a transfer, there's no impact. So let's take a look here. We've got a gain of A to producers. We've got a, an equivalent loss to consumers. We've got government revenue gain paid for by the increased prices for imported goods that's passed on to domestic consumers. And we have net losses of B Indeed. Now these are what are called deadweight losses. That is to say, a loss over and above any gain to anyone inside the domestic economy. So we we'll give a quick interpretation of this, although we we'll go into this in more detail in a different video. B represents the cost of inefficient domestic production. Okay, you've had production incre increase from Q1 to Q3, and B is the cost of producing this domestically that in excess of the, what you could have bought this for from foreigners. So B is the efficiency of loss associated with the tariff. D is the cost to consumers that are priced out of the market. Now this is a, probably an unintended consequence of the tariff. In many instances, the governments aren't planning on hurting consumers, but nonetheless, they do have that impact. Higher price is going to mean that the consumer who is just willing to buy this product at $100, if they charge $101, they say, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't do it. You know, it's just not worth it to me. That's what area D is. So let's sum up and say that the, the impact of a small country imposing a tariff on imported goods is such that it increases the domestic price, it increases domestic production, it increases domestic employment, it increases government revenue. But economic analysis would say it, it meets those goals at a relatively high cost, a high cost to consumers. And in particular, we see that the losses to consumers exceeds any gains to the government 
and producers. So in this sense, economists will argue that tariffs are not a great idea for a small country. But I want to reemphasize something that I said earlier. This, uh, this outcome, that net losses exceed net gains, really does depend on how you evaluate national welfare. For example, if I put much greater weight on producers, I just care about it more. Maybe because it's a sympathetic industry, maybe it's politically influential, maybe it's tied to the ethnic group uh, that I come from in a, in a developing country or wherever. If I have that higher weight on the producer surplus loss, and I don't really care whether or not consumers win or lose, then you might change this calculus. But that should be done with full information in the sense that anyone making that assessment of I care more about producers or for that matter government revenue than I do about consumers, at least be aware of that. But if you treat them all the same, consumers, producers, government within the domestic economy, the tariff of the small country is going to be a bad policy from a national welfare standpoint.